Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll be discussing more about enzymes. And in this video, we'll also cover about uh, some sorts of inhibitions such as competitive, non-competitive, and uh, uncompetitive ones. And at the end of this video, we have some numericals for you so that you it's easy for you to correlate things, whatever I've told you. So you may give it a try. And if you cannot solve it, you may type your thoughts in the comment section. I'll definitely help you out. So let's get started with today's video. So the first sort of inhibition we in this video, what we what we are gonna cover is competitive enzymes inhibition. So this inhibition is basically known as competitive because the substrate in this type sort of inhibition competes for the active site in the enzyme. So let me just elaborate things. So as you can see, let's just focus on this equation just so this is a general uh, enzymatic uh, enzymatic kinetic uh, equation as we know so when the enzyme plus substrate it combines to form an enzyme substrate complex which leads to the formation of product later all right so as we see in the diagram let's just ignore this part for now so as we see in this so when this enzyme uh, and this is the active site for the enzyme so when the substrate gets uh, binded here as you can see in this, it leads to formation of enzyme substrate complex and which later leads to formation of product. But in this case, what happens is it competes. So how it competes? So it basically competes with the end substrate and with the inhibitor at the same time. So as we see here, so this enzyme has its active site open. All right. So for the substrate to bind in but in this at this point of time two things might happen so one is this and second is this so first thing is either the substrate will get here uh, on the active side of an enzyme and will form an enzyme substrate complex and later it will form the product or it may it uh, it may not allow the substrate to get into the active site of the enzyme whereas the inhibitor will occupy its position as you see here so inhibitor has occupied its position to form an enzyme inhibitor complex and which hinders the formation of product. All right. So in this you see uh, there are two paths for enzyme substrate. So this is one path. This is another path. So in this path, in the downwards path, in this case, the enzyme combines with the inhibitor to form an enzyme inhibitor complex. Whereas the first part, it combines with the substrate to form an enzyme substrate complex. So basically in this case, the enzyme the shows the enzyme has its active site and its active sites has competition for the substrate or the inhibitor or the or in other words, substrate and substrate and inhibitor competes for the active site of an enzyme. All right. Whoever gets first forms that sort of complex. So if substrate gets first, it forms enzyme substrate complex or if Inhibitor gets first, it forms an enzyme inhibitor complex. So this was about the competitive one. So moving on. So we have the next one, which is the uncompetitive one. So the ends and the uncompetitive enzyme inhibition, uh, it does not compete. Definitely it won't compete as the name suggests. So in this, what happens is, so let us focus on the first equation. So this is the basic equation for the enzyme uh, where the substrate uh, occupies the active site of an enzyme to form an enzyme substrate complex and which later forms product. So as you see, so in this case, what happens is enzyme has two active sites or two sites for attachment. As you see, there are two sites in this case. So, so in this, what happens is uh, simultaneous things happen. So how simultaneous things happen is if, if uh, let's just follow this part just this part let's not focus, uh, focus on the downward part so let's just focus this part so in this part the substrate gets on the active side of an enzyme to form an enzyme substrate complex and if it continues it will form a product but in this case it does not happen because it is sort some sort of inhibition as the name suggests enzymes inhibition so the role of inhibitor has to come in this place that's why it inhibits so in this case, what happens is, so 
uh, when the enzyme gets attached to the substrate it forms an enzyme substrate complex but from there on it gets after forming the complex it uh, combines with an inhibitor because it enzyme has another free free slot for its occupancies right so enzyme has another free slot which is occupied by the inhibitor later after formation of this complex enzyme substrate complex and it forms a trio so the trio is enzyme substrate inhibitor complex so it does not compete it happens step by step after the formation of enzyme substrate complex and later it combines with the inhibitor to form enzyme substrate inhibitor complex so this was about the non-competitive one uncompetitive one pardon and the last one we have the non-competitive one so this is a bit uh, uh, big uh, it's a bit complex than the other two so as the name suggests, suggests is the non-competitive enzyme inhibition so let's get started with this so let me just explain with the diagram first then we'll move into this equation uh, so so as as same with the uh, uncompetitive one it has two sites it has two occupancies so it can either be occupied by two substrates or by two inhibitors or by one substrate or one inhibitor all right so in this case if we follow this path let's just follow this path and not follow the downward path in the first case so in the first case we are following this path so the enzyme gets uh, occupied by the substrate to form an enzyme substrate complex all right so let's just stop here all right we won't move further from here so we form if we got the enzyme substrate complex so let's just come back to the enzyme part and follow this part the downward part so in this case what happens is uh, let's say the enzyme is attacked by inhibitor first and not by enzyme so the inhibitor site is occupied by the enzyme uh, so this forms an enzyme inhibitor complex in this case so in this case so what we have learned that in the first case the substrate gets uh, occupied at the enzyme site to form an enzyme substrate complex whereas in the second case with, which is the downward part in this case the inhibitor is occupied on the enzyme to form an enzyme inhibitor complex all right so let's just stop here all right we won't move further so these are the two outcomes we came uh, we uh, got from here so in both the outcomes it forms a different sort of complex does not form a trio it, yet till then uh, till here it is not forming a trio until here it's not forming a trio so it is forming an enzyme substrate complex or an enzyme inhibitor complex so let's just come to the first part from where we left so this is the part we left so this is the part we left so we'll move on from here so after the enzyme substrate complex is formed we have uh, the enzyme has another free site as we know because the substrate is only attacked or the auger so because the enzyme is only filled by the substrate and enzyme has another free occupy occupancies right so the enzyme is filled by now the inhibitor which is left or cause the name suggests it's a sort of some sort of inhibition so the role of inhibitor has to play all right so the uh, one more site is left which is occupied by the inhibitor as shown here so in this case now it forms a trio as substrate was already present with the enzyme and now inhibitor joins in to form an enzyme substrate inhibitor so this was the this circle so coming from so coming from the second way that we figured out from here so this was the point we stopped when we talked about inhibitors so when inhibitor gets attacked first it forms an enzyme inhibitor complex but enzyme but as we know the inhibitor is already attacked so uh, there is probably no need for another inhibitor to attack because we have only al already one inhibitor to inhibit the process so in this case uh, the enzyme has an active site present which is empty all right where the inhibitor is occupied in its place and the enzyme al uh, uh, already has an active site present which is empty so therefore the active site is occupied by the enzyme with the help of a substrate all right so the substrate it gets into the active site of an enzyme along with the inhibitor to form a trio so the in the both cases it leads to the formation of trio at the end as we see it forms it leads to the formation of enzyme substrate inhibitor complex so as from the equation we see let's uh, it form firstly considering the first case in the first case enzyme combines with the substrate to form a 
uh, enzyme substrate complex uh, of if we consider this way so in this case the enzyme is first attacked by the inhibitor to form a enzyme inhibitor complex so this was the first and this was the second stage right so in this case we got the substrate in enzyme complex and in this case we got the inhibitor enzyme complex so in this case there is there is no inhibitor so the inhibitor combines with the entire complex to form esi or the enzyme substrate inhibitor complex and in this case uh, an active site is present in the enzyme so the substrate binds into this to form esi all right which leads which hinders the formation of product. so this was about the non competitive enzyme inhibition so these are some sorts of graphs that is very important for competitive uncompetitive non competitive and substrate inhibition is also present which i'll be explaining now so these are four graphs which are very important you may pause the video and just look at it so these cutting points at the y axis are the y intercepts all right so these are all our y intercepts and you can find out slope from these graphs and these are the proper graphs for all of these inhibitions so the next part which is the substrate inhibition so in substrate inhibition what happens is let's just talk about this equation so in this the enzyme combines with the substrate to form enzyme substrate uh, complex so in this case what happens is it has two sites as we know the enzyme has two uh, empty sites for attachment so in this case what happens is another substrate gets it to the uh, another uh, empty site of an enzyme to form es2 so in what in this case what happens is uh, firstly it forms a complex known as enzyme uh, enzyme substrate complex and the enzyme has another free active site present in it so that is occupied by another substrate all right so in this case the enzyme is filled by two substrate and that is no inhibitor all right so it forms a complex of es2 which hinders the formation of product because of the presence of two substrates so in this graph as we see so if there are no inhibition the substrate uh, if there are no inhibitions uh, it leads to the formation of products and if there are inhibitions it, it will uh, definitely not lead to the formation of product or it is represented substrate inhibition is represented by this expression from there here you can find out v which is given as this all right so from the previous graph uh, this is the slope for the graph and this is the intercept so as i have already shown the graph for uh, substrate inhibition so you can just check it out also it's written that the reaction rate with same vm and km if no substrate inhibition is present so this is the normal michaelis maintained reaction and this is the inhibition thing which inhibits because of the presence of two substrates all right with this so these are some of the numericals that i found which is which would be very beneficial for you if you solve them so you may just give it a try if you cannot you may definitely type your doubts in the comment section i'll definitely help you out and i have more numericals such as these so for this uh, numerical is a bit complex one so you may give it a try and this one is the easy one so these are the easy ones which i have already taught in my previous video so you can just check out the previous video and solve them so let's just keep this video till here and stay tuned for more and thank you for watching this.